all right welcome back to the channel warhammer man back in the studio and today we're gonna be well i had a plan but uh now we're just kind of winging it because uh gw's having some issues as always so uh first and foremost uh you know my condolences to uh about the queen um obviously she was around for a long time it's not a political channel or anything but uh you know i feel for you guys uh out there so that being said what we were planning on doing today was taking a look at the faq the new faq that dropped unfortunately uh gw is having some issues so warhammer community uh not currently working at the time uh so we'll have to uh wait and take care of that sometime into the future i'm sure it is just some technical difficulties as always from uh, gw and affiliates uh, but in time i would imagine it'll be fixed uh, we'll do a deep dive for the warhammer 40k fact uh, it is probably not a ton of big changes, and each time they put out the new FAQ, uh, they include the old changes, so it just gets bigger and bigger and longer and longer, and it's probably not a bunch of important changes in it, uh, but we will take a look at that once uh, once it does show back up, once Games Workshop gets the uh, gremlins out of the system or whatever, so uh, in the meantime, we'll take a look at a couple of these other ones. Uh, so we got a uh, new Blood Bowl Forge World model right here. Uh, so this is a new, I believe it's a Croxagore, uh, big old uh, lizard man for Blood Bowl there. Uh, it is a Forge World model, uh, will be available with his own rules in either the Spike Journal or uh, it comes with the model if you do go ahead and purchase him. So that's kind of cool, uh, it's definitely a nice looking model. I, again, I'm not a big fan of uh, any of the resin miniatures, so I try to avoid them as much as I can. Uh, leagues of Votan bring brutal new weapon profiles to Warhammer 40k. So obviously there's been a lot of leaks about the codex and everything. And uh, what some of the weapons do. They've been shown off in some battle ports, etc. Uh, so we have basically the, the regular weapons of the Votan are the hunter weapons. And all they are is they have just a different number after them. And that just tells you how many shots they get. So if it's a hunter 2 weapon, it gets 2 shots. If it's hunter 3, it gets 3 shots. Uh, etc uh, but your typical bolt weapon 24 inch range strength 4 ap1 damage 1 nothing too crazy there uh, next we have the magna rail rifles so these are pretty interesting they're basically uh you know right off the bat they inv ignore invulnerable saving throws so that's definitely a big thing and then the first question you should have after that is well what's the ap minus 4 ap is pretty good it means most stuff if you, if you didn't have a two up already the minus four would take you to a six up. So anything with a three up or worse save is going to get no save against these because it ignores your invulnerable and your regular save. Obviously, there's cover and there's, you know, um, minus one for, you know, various rules, etc. Uh, but minus four is pretty aggressive. So minus four right off the bat, ignoring invulnerable saves. Okay, you've got my interest. Now, 24 inch range is not a lot for like a sniper style weapon. Uh, and it is uh, one shot. But the special ability is pretty cool. It's damage three, or I'm sorry, D3 plus three. So it's going to be four to six damage. So let's say you're shooting at, say, an intercessor who has two wounds. On an unmodified wound roll of six, excess damage that weapon inflicts is not lost. Instead, keep allocating excess damage to another model in the target unit until all the excess damage has been allocated to the target unit. Is destroyed so basically this rail shot goes through the first guy kills him and then hits the next guy again it's only on a roll of a six to wound so if you roll that six to wound and then you roll your damage you get an average so you get two plus three so you're doing five damage now the first intercessor would die a second intercessor would die and then a third intercessor would take one wound so it's pretty good now what if you're shooting at something like termagants or something like that again same thing you hit you end up wounding on a six and then you roll that two again, you would get five uh, damage with it. Each termagant has one wound, so it would basically just kill five termagants. So it's pretty cool because it can essentially, it doesn't waste those extra wounds. Now, it's only on a six to wound. So if you have something that improves your chance of getting that six, like a reroll, that's great. Otherwise, you know, it's about a 16% chance. So it's not great. It's not bad. It's definitely an interesting rule dynamic. If it was more than one shot, it would be a little more frightening. But at one shot, I don't think it's too bad. And it's not like you have like tons of like full units of Magna Rail Rifles just deleting everything off the board. 
they seem to be like kind of just splashed in random units or on random vehicles etc so uh, i like the rule i think it's cool overall uh it's not going to happen nearly as much as you think because you know if you have basically something hitting on a d6 roll if they're hitting on threes or let's say you can boost it up to twos you know you're basically missing right away with one six of your shots and then on top of that you now have your remaining let's say out of 36 shots you already mixed with six of them if you're hitting on twos so now you have 30 shots left and then of those 30 shots you're going to roll five sixes so five out of your 36 total shots are going to have this special rule so it's not really like i mean it'll happen at cru at crucial times it'll happen it'll be cool it'll be fun but it's not going to be like a game breaking game changing effect in my opinion so uh, and then you have the beam weapons so we've seen this quite a bit already but essentially what the beam weapons do is you know you pick a target and then you draw a line from yourself to that target and then anything underneath that line if you score a hit on the initial unit which was your target anything under that line now you roll the wound roll on as well so basically let's say you have three units in a straight line and you shoot at the furthest unit from you and the line passes over the first two units and then you score a hit with this against your intended target you're now going to wound roll to wound on your intended target plus the other two in the way so it's pretty cool this is two shots there are some restrictions uh, like when you actually shoot with this weapon, you draw a line between the closest point of this model's base or hull and that of the closest model in the target unit. So you can't just shoot at a certain model in the unit to make sure that you hit stuff under it. It has to be the closest point of your hull to or base to the closest point of, you know, one model in that unit. So you do have to position for this. It's very important that you're positioned correctly. Um, not a bad weapon, though. Obviously, 30 inch range, uh, two shots strength eight minus three four damage it, this is a weird unit uh, rule right here as well abilities beam each time an attack is made with this weapon hits a unit if the unit that was hit is wholly more than 15 so we've never seen them word stuff like this it's obviously horribly horribly worded what do you expect from gw if they're wholly more than 15 inches from the firing model one additional hit is scored against that unit okay so if you shoot at the unit and any of the models are within 15 you don't get the special rule if the whole unit is more than 15 inches from you and you use this rule which keep in mind you have a 30 inch range so you still have a 15 inch leeway there when you score a hit you get an extra hit now the way this is worded you don't get an extra hit against those other units when you score a hit you just make a wound roll against them so these two rules do not stack on each other so let's say that same scenario again i have three units in between uh, three units in a straight line I'm going to shoot at the furthest away unit and it's more than 15 but less than 30 so it's an eligible target outside of 15. when i roll to hit them if i scored let's say a five and i hit with my you know one of my two shots let's say that one shot immediately becomes a second hit because of the special ability rule it gives me a second hit um, if it's more than 15 away so now i have two hits on that unit and i'm going to go to roll the wound against that unit so i'll roll two wound dice and then for the other two units that were in the way i'll get to roll an additional you know i'll get to roll a wound dice against each of those but because you don't actually score a hit against the other ones you just roll to wound the other ones you do not get to stack this ability but theoretically you could shoot this twice at the same target that we just talked about so you would have your two shots at the target more than 15 but less than 30 and then you score two hits let's say each of those hits scores an additional hit so now you have four wounds against that one and then you have a wound against the each of the other two units so neat little rule um definitely it's powerful strength eight minus three four damage um it can definitely dish out some uh damage there so pretty cool overall uh we know you'll have the choice of the rail or the beamer um on top of the uh, big tank the fortress whatever you want to call it um pretty cool overall i like the rules i think they're pretty slick uh we got the codex right around the corner so definitely looking forward to that um, I haven't seen like the full codex or anything. I know there's always like, you know, tons and tons of leaks and everything. I uh, just haven't jumped on it, but it is cool to see the new rules. It's cool to see a new style and, uh, you know, we'll see how it plays out over time. So, um, and then we know the new Ogre Maw Tribes codex is coming. Uh, so here we have the Ogre Maw Tribes. Uh, we saw one new model that will be coming out as well. Uh, so uh, I don't know if that's going to be in a box set. I would imagine it's probably, uh, you know, be a couple new models behind the box set uh, but pretty cool overall we'll see how it goes 
they have announced the uh, upcoming battle tomes. Uh, and obviously this was one of the ones announced, so we'll see. Uh, let's take a look at the FAQs and see if they got that sorted out. Okay, so not yet. Uh, we'll have to come back to it uh, when the time is right. So um, obviously now is not the time to be looking at that FAQ. There must have been some kind of mistake or something, whatever. So um, that's pretty much it. Not a ton of excitement today. I just wanted to uh, hit you guys with that. I was definitely planning on taking a look at that FAQ, breaking it down and seeing what's new. Uh, but that's not happening today, so... Uh, we'll go ahead and just uh, release this. You guys, let me know what you think. Are you excited for the uh, new Croxador Blood Bowler? Are you looking forward to the new uh, Vo Leagues of Votan? Or, you know, I guess dreading them shooting all your stuff off the table. Although, so far, I haven't seen anything too crazy. Uh, Ogre Maw Tribes, obviously, that's a big one. We know there's a new model coming. Um, hopefully, there's going to be more. A couple of the Ogre kits could probably use an update, upgrade, whatever. Uh, they're looking a little bit dated at this point in time. But uh, we will see in time. So... Uh, but that's it for today. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. If you enjoyed today's video, if you like these daily reviews, reactions, and news videos uh, for Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, Warcry, and some Horus Heresy, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, it's absolutely free and really helps out the channel. That's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and I'm out of here.